What's going on, everybody? I have Kennington Lloyd Smith the third covers Iowa for the Des Moines Register. What's going on, Kennington? We're going to talk about Terry, get into a big breakdown, but how are you doing here? I'm great. Um, you know, as you know, this is such a crazy time to be in, in college athletics, you know, transfer portal, early signing day, NIL, you know, teams starting to get into that winter, you know, conditioning point, still, you know, sifting through coaching staff changes. So um, college football never stops. So uh, even though the season is over, you know, it still feels like we're in full swing, but um, exciting time. And, um, you know, I'm very glad to to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're definitely going to get into it. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I know people might be critical of how things work in college football now, but bottom line, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting for the sport, mm -hmm. fan bases, hope is along the way. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Miami's glad to have a guy like Terry Roberts. I want to go through his, his career. It seems very interesting to me, kind of doing some research. But just if you could summarize, and we'll, again, we'll break it down, you know, fully for his career, but just maybe summarize what kind of player he is, uh, what, what kind of, essentially, what kind of player Miami's getting here. Yeah, I mean, Terry is somebody who was very highly regarded in Iowa's program, somebody who they considered a starting level cornerback throughout his entire career. One thing I'll say about Terry is he plays with this chip on his shoulder that um, is magnetic. And really this year, this past year, it was unfortunate that he got hurt really early in the season. But I felt like in the first few games, he was the best cornerback that Iowa had, which is saying a lot because Riley Moss, was a Big Ten defensive back of the year, preseason All-American. Cooper D. Jean ended up being first team All-Big Ten and, and having five interceptions. And I feel like Terry was outperforming them early on in, in the year. He is um, a special teams maven. I think that he has a place um, at the next level, even if it was just at the special teams level. And for those who are not very familiar with Iowa's program, special teams is a huge staple of Iowa's culture. And Kirk Ferentz describes him as one of the best special teams players that he's ever had um, at Iowa. And that's saying a lot because he's been at Iowa for um, a few decades now. So he's kind of somebody who's going to impact it on defense. He can impact the team and, and special teams as well. And he was one of the biggest leaders on the team as well. So he's somebody who's going to add something to the, the locker room culture. And I think somebody who's going to, you know, fit right in and, you know, push Miami uh, along. I know, you know, Coach Cristobal is is trying to build something there and build that foundation. And Terry Roberts is somebody who can be, you know, somebody who can kind of push that culture along, I think. You, know, you touched on the, this 2022 season. He had five games, you know, three starts there. PFF grades, as you mentioned, had a good start to the season. Uh, his PFF grades represent that. His coverage grade is 79.9. Just kind of put that in perspective. That That's higher than any of Miami's corners this past season. You know, uh, take me through kind of what happened, if you could explain his injury and just kind of how he was looking more. Uh, like you said, you you were impressed with what you did see in those few games to get it started here in 2022. Yeah, um, they never really quite specified what exactly his injury was. If I could say, I think it was a lower leg injury. And um, I know you asked about this past year, but going back to 2021, he had a very serious um, hyper extension of the knee. He had like a hyper extended knee and a bone bruise and like one compounding injury that kept him sidelined for the second half of last season, all the way up to this season. And I believe he, um, you know, re-aggravated his lower leg early in the year that kind of uh, kept him out. But at the beginning of the year, I mean, he was somebody who uh, was dominant in, in the run game, somebody who he's not a big corner, um, but he's somebody who's going to stick his nose in there and and um, and hit somebody. And then obviously in pass coverage, he had, um, I believe, one interception. He could have had a few more. Um, there were some that that he let, um, you know, slip through. I'm thinking of the Iowa State game, uh, for example, which was like a Closely contested seesaw type of game. He um, he could have had a pick in that game, um, but but dropped it. But he was on top of um, you know the receivers that that he was covering. And there's a lot of responsibility on cornerbacks in Iowa system. They're not a, a team that plays nickel and dime very much. Um, a lot of it falls on there to outside cornerbacks. So um, in terms of I, uh, Miami scheme, I'm not sure if they're going to have him outside. I definitely could see him playing um, in the slot if they employ a lot of nickel coverage. But he's somebody who's just very versatile and. It was really exciting to see him get his opportunity. He's somebody who has that that skill level. He just hasn't really had those opportunities at Iowa. And to see him get that opportunity at the beginning of this year and, and really play through it, he was one of the initial good stories on Iowa's season. It's something that the fans really talked about almost every week when, when he was healthy is like, man, we're so glad that Terry is getting this opportunity finally to play on defense and look how well he's playing and what this could mean for the future. And then, uh, you know, he had another injury setback that, that kind of, um, you know, derailed his season a bit, but um, 
you know, he was somebody who was, who was really impactful. And Iowa's defense was one of the best in the country statistically. Um, and he was, you know, a huge part of that at the beginning part of the year. Yeah, so just kind of recapping his career. Uh, this will be a sixth year, six year guy, senior, listed at 5'10, 182, speaking to not being the biggest corner there. Uh, 33 games played, the four career starts uh, coming this past couple seasons um, with, with, with just the starts there, a couple of pass breakups, two career interceptions, just some stats there. You know, with, with his, not with his size, you know, his 5'10, 182, like I mentioned, uh, his cover skills. What, what have you seen? What, what essentially makes him a good corner? Um, obviously, you're speaking highly about him. His cover skills. What, what can you say about how he kind of defends guys, uh, d- defends receivers? Yeah, he's a he's a speed guy for sure. He's somebody who's going to run stride for stride with with players. And this kind of goes back to how he's so good on special teams. He I don't know I don't know if downing punts inside the five for a gunner is a statistic, but he has to be top five in the country at downing punts inside the five. And we've asked him about that. How are you able to get down there so fast? And he just said, you know, I just use my speed. And it's the same way when when he plays corner. I mean, he's somebody who just kind of sits on top of routes. He's a very smart player. Um, so he uses his his IQ to to diagnose plays, to to diagnose receivers routes, and then he just uses his speed to kind of stay on uh, on top of guys. He does have pretty good ball skills. Um, again, being matched up against bigger receivers um, is obviously going to be a, a bit of a challenge for him. But I would say, um, you know, just his ability to run stride for stride with with guys is, is probably his best attribute. Kenny, you talked about him having a, kind of just playing with a chip on his shoulder, kind of a guy. I, I'm curious, maybe your your thoughts on him coming into this season uh, with the way last year worked, you know, with getting hurt and things like that. Uh, 2021, he makes his first career start there against Purdue, then misses the final seven games with an injury. You got to feel like this is a guy, if he already has a chip on his shoulder, it feels like maybe going into this next season, his final year at Miami, that that he could have one of these kind of good, solid or, or really good years um, with that chip, what, what what do you expect from him? Maybe with that bounce back attitude. Yeah, I just expect him to continue what he did in 2022. And a little background on just kind of his time at Iowa. And I know that I'm speaking highly of him. And there are probably people who are listening to this and they're wondering, well, why didn't he get on the field earlier? Well, like I said, Iowa employs a two cornerback system. They rarely go into nickel. And thinking about who Iowa's had in the time that he's been in school you have like i said riley moss who is an all big 10 uh cornerback matt hankins who is on the atlanta falcons practice squad right now um julius brents who transferred to kansas state um and is you know looking to go to the nfl michael ojamudie who is a cornerback on the denver broncos right now i was had nfl level cornerbacks um at the same age as Terry and Kirk Francis said many times that he feels like Terry is of that same caliber, but he just hasn't gotten that same opportunity. So you think about it from Terry's perspective, like you said, he finally gets his first start in 2021, gets hurt, misses the entire season. He finally gets an opportunity to be the starting cornerback in 2022. And he's off to a great start, gets injured, misses the, the rest of the season. So um, I just feel like throughout his, his time, his chip is only getting bigger and bigger. And I just anticipate him getting a, an opportunity and a fresh start, uh, you know, in a new program where he feels like he can be, you know, a vital piece to the defense. I just expect him to kind of continue what he did in 2022 and um, hopefully have a, a truly breakout year. I mean, Terry is um, a pleasure to talk to. He's a, he's a great person, uh, somebody who we in the media really enjoy interacting with. I hope, you know, you all in, in Miami, uh, media get the same opportunity to to interact with him, somebody that you just, you know, want to root for. So I just expect him to go down there, um, you know, and play his heart out and give his all for for the program. And if he looks anything like he did at the beginning of, of this past season, I mean, he's somebody who's going to be a really impactful piece on the defense. You know, this Iowa program has, has won a bunch of games, 43 wins over his career since he was there, uh, three bowl wins. Uh, that was impressive as well. Look, the Iowa defense, Top five in the in the Big Ten all five years he was there. He touched on this past season, led the the Big Ten in, in total defense, number one in pass defense, number four in the nation pass efficiency defense. So he's playing obviously on a good defense. Uh, what what can you say about this Iowa defense? What essentially what it takes to play for this defense? And you keep talking about the system that they run, but maybe just what it takes and and to to have that success for a defensive player. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that you have to be is detail oriented. You have to be locked into the game plan. You have to be prepared. Phil Parker, defensive coordinator, is somebody who puts a high premium on communication, being in the right place at the right time. And in order to be in the right place at the right time to create the turnovers that Iowa does, you have to be locked into the game plan. You have to be locked into the system and you have to uh, you have to be consistent. 
And I think that is probably the hallmark of, of Iowa's defense is that they are just consistently in the right place. You rarely see busted coverages in Iowa's system. You rarely see players missing tackles in, in, in Iowa's system. They're just a really disciplined, dialed in unit. And, and you know, I'm thinking about, you know, Miami, and I'm not going to act like I've watched game to game, but I'm looking, I'm thinking about a game uh, like Middle Tennessee, for example, you're seeing a lot of big plays over over the top of the defense. That is something that I will prize himself on maybe more than anything is um, limiting the big plays. So I think that Terry will be a, a great fit in Miami's system from, from that regard. Um, but it really is just kind of comes down to preparation locking into the into the game plan and um you know just being in the right place and just being dependable. I know that sounds like coach speak and that sounds mundane, but in talking to the players, that's really what they point to. And then when you get a chance to watch Iowa week to week like I have, um, and this is only my second year on the beat. So I didn't have a lot of experience watching Iowa myself, but looking at them over the last few years, that's what point that's what sticks out to me. It's just like, man, like these dudes are um, you know, there's rarely in a, they're rarely in the wrong spot. Like they're just, you know, exactly where where they need to be. And I would probably say that's the the hallmark of a, of a Phil Parker defense. Yeah, obviously, excellent special teams player, as you've mentioned. There's another which obviously takes a lot of a lot of grit and, and skill with that, and a lot of pride to be a really good special teams player. I'm curious about this player council thing that he was a part of. Twelve players on the team, um, essentially a leadership committee that was you mm-hmm. know appointed with the coaches and players. Uh, help with policies and kind of some uh, some delivering some team meeting type things. It shows this leadership. Uh, what can you say about that uh, with Terry's leadership skills there? Yeah. So in, in terms of just the leadership council, again, that that speaks to the fact that somebody, you know, a lot of times you think of leadership councils as like, you know, your starters or your guys with the high end statistical profiles. And he didn't fit that um, for the duration of his career at Iowa, but he was just somebody who was so well thought of and somebody who was very outspoken and somebody who was a beacon of change. Um, you know, in 2020, Iowa's program was rocked by the the racial you know disparities allegations that came out from former players and there was a lot of soul searching that had to happen in Iowa's program and Terry Roberts was somebody who's at the forefront of that advocating for you know black players on the team advocating for a cultural change and somebody who really challenged the coaching staff to stand on what they were saying when they said you know we are committed to change and we are committed to kind of making this an inclusive environment he was really one of the players that really um you know put the pressure on the coaches and was at the forefront of, of that movement so putting him on that committee and and him being somebody who just kind of you know brought younger guys along and was kind of somebody who helped rebuild the culture in a way at, at Iowa something I think he's going to be remembered for you know now that he's departed from the the program so definitely somebody who was super well thought of by the the coaches but thought of by the players you ask anybody in Iowa secondary who is you know of a younger age who's somebody who helped you out and brought you along they're going to say Terry obviously a huge leader in the special teams unit as well which is a big part of, of Iowa's um culture so he was somebody who was really one of like the key pieces of the fabric of you know kind of the the remake of Iowa's program over the last few years yeah, that, that's great stuff. Certainly sounds like a great person on and off the field. Definitely appreciate your insight, Kenny. Man, it, this, this was excellent. Hopefully uh, everything go, goes well for you here in this offseason, staying busy with exciting stuff. So I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I think that Miami is going to really enjoy having somebody like him in, in the program. I think the media is going to enjoy interacting with them should they get the chance. And I think the fans are going to enjoy watching the fire that he brings to the field in whatever capacity, um, you know, he gets a chance to play in with the, with the program. So um, it's been a pleasure to, to speak on him and I'm um, glad for the opportunity. So thank you.